This week, India has dispatched its first ever year-round Arctic expedition to the Arctic station Himadri, which is located in the Norwegian territory. This station is a science and research station and the mission is a science mission as well and it comes under the purview of the Ministry of Earth Sciences. What kind of science is this mission going to do? What science is India doing in the region which is also a very strategic location geopolitically and is going to become the next contested region very soon? The objective of the mission and in fact the station Himadri is undertaking climate research. So far the station has been functional only in the summer since its establishment in 2008. But the intention of this government now is to keep it running all year round so that they can keep monitoring climate parameters. So this team has hence departed on its journey and will reach when it's peak winter in the Arctic. This Himadri station is located in a broad region called the International Arctic Research Base, which is named New Olsen, and it is about 1,200 kilometers from the North Pole. The Himadri station is India's first permanent Arctic research station, and this entire region, this entire research base, has a permanent population of about 35 people all year round and exceeds 100 in the summers. And there are permanent research bases from 11 countries and 19 institutes so far. New Olsen is in fact the northernmost settlement in the world currently functional and occupied by humans. The main objectives of this Himadri mission is to study the atmospheric dynamics, the glacial and sedimentary ecosystems and space weather. That is precisely what this team of scientists is going to do. There is also the IND-ARC, I-N-D-A-R-C, which is India's first underwater observatory and it is moored and it is once again in the Norwegian territory, very close to the North Pole. This observatory studies the climate at Arctic and how variations in Arctic climate influence the monsoons around the rest of the world. This region is also crucially important for geopolitical reasons, but let's finish the science part of this first. Why is the Arctic a good place to study climate change? The Arctic is a unique and interesting region to understand the world's climate from. It is the polar region, this whole Arctic circle, and the North Pole, unlike the South Pole, is not in the middle of land. The North Pole instead is located on the ocean, on sea ice, and that is what the Arctic mainly is. There is no land at the North Pole. Near the ocean, there is marine or maritime climate. This is along the coast of countries that border the Arctic Circle, so Alaska, Canada, Northern Russia, Scandinavian countries and Iceland. Here the winters are wet with snow and rain and the summers are cool and cloudy along the coasts of these countries. The average temperature year round is almost always around 10 degrees Celsius or so with variations. In the interior regions of the Arctic though, both on land and on ice, there is continental climate. Of course, the conditions are different on land and ice. On land, the weather is more dry, there is less snow, and the summers are sunny and warm. Winters are severe with average temperatures going down to below minus 40 degrees Celsius and summers can see up to plus 30 degrees Celsius. Just within the Arctic Circle, there is so much variation in weather. But what happens in the Arctic and around it affects the weather and climate in the rest of the world, especially the Northern Hemisphere. There are feedback loops of energy in this polar region and one of the world's two largest ice sheets, the Antarctic and Greenland, is located in the Arctic region. These large blocks of ice, the Greenland ice sheet, they change wind and storm patterns. They also make winds move in very specific direction and the height of the ice and the amount of the melt of the ice affects all of these parameters. This entire region is extremely fragile, mainly because both poles heat up much faster than the rest of the planet. The Arctic, in fact, warms up to four times faster than the rest of the globe, and this phenomenon is known as Arctic amplification. Because of Arctic amplification, 
changes in weather patterns and variations in climate data are much more drastic and obvious in the Arctic region. The melting of sea ice right there also provides ample opportunity to study the dynamics between ice and sea, how ice cracks and changes with climate, study energy mechanisms and more that has to do with ice and water. Additionally, there is life here. There are marine mammals, most famous of which are of course polar bears, but there's also seals and there are plankton, all of which are subjects of active research already. This team that is reaching the Himadri station will study all of this except for animals. The Indian Arctic presence and the Himadri station's scientific objectives overall are to study aerosols and gases and their physical, chemical and optical properties, studying space weather and solar wind and the formation of northern lights and the interactions of these charged particles from the sun with the ionosphere, studying microbial communities, especially the ones that are on the seabed, understanding the nutrition of phytoplankton, performing glaciology and studying the variation of snow with carbon dioxide throughout the day, and monitoring ecological parameters like seawater salinity and sea surface temperature. By the time this team returns, the next group of scientists who will make up the next crew to occupy the Himadri station would already be on their way to replace them. Now, one of the more important and larger reasons why governments are so interested in studying and understanding and occupying Arctic territories is, you guessed it, oil. The Arctic is thought to hold nearly 40% of the world's oil reserves. And even as leaders continue to make pledges to decrease emissions, we can all see that they're brazenly working towards increasing oil drilling and mining. And the Arctic is the next big destination that all wealthy countries are flocking to. It's not just that the Arctic ice melt is going to now start revealing previously undiscovered underwater resources, but the melting ice will also open up new shipping routes. Shipping routes through the sea carrying oil and goods is already interesting in today's news cycle for a different context. So we understand the geopolitical implications of this. And this is the interesting part about the climate crisis, right? World leaders are not really talking about the specific magnitude of crises that will unfold over the next few years even as they commit to pledges that reduce emissions. But very openly, the same leaders are also expanding their presence and resources towards regions they know will open up to them with more environmentally harmful resources through climate change. This is true even for climate denying leaders, ironically, and the Northern Hemisphere countries have made this Arctic region extremely contentious. This region has such a political significance that in 1996, the Arctic Council was formed comprising the Arctic nations, which is Canada, Alaska, so US, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Iceland and Norway, and Russia. These countries are also known as the Arctic Eight because they have territory that falls within the Arctic Circle and their borders touch the Arctic Ocean. However, there is still one good news with this. It is that building oil mining fields in the Arctic will be a tough, slow, tedious and expensive process which will take time. And hopefully our climate commitments and policies within the next three to five years would become strong enough to prevent newer sources of emissions. And shipping routes, well, that is bound to happen. And once again, just like at the Red Sea now, it is believed that wars would indeed break out over these shipping routes in the future as well. Meanwhile, for the next few years, the Indian Arctic station Himadri is expected to be in the news much more, with more data and information coming out of it as India steps into its new exciting phase of year-long Arctic scientific research.